So hello everyone, welcome to BSP Solutions. So in this video, we are going to discuss some tips and tricks for better understanding of FCCS. So let's start. So you can assume that it uh, it is like a beginner session for FCCS and uh, how we can resolve various sort of uh, problems in FCCS. Okay, so our agenda will be like, we will discuss the what uh, problems we are having while we define the ownership data and uh, our figures are not coming as we are expecting and the second is that uh, exchange rates then we have override data issues and uh, the lastly we have out of balances okay and under this we have metadata entity metadata account and metadata account hierarchies so let's start okay so first uh, we'll discuss that uh, ownership data okay so uh, the prerequisites are that uh, we must have a holding company, okay, and further we have various subsidiaries. But for all the for all of the entities, we have a common parent, okay. So you can see in the screenshot also, we have an uh, you can call it as a super parent or the C level we have, okay, and then we have the uh, the all the children of it. But one of these entities should be a holding company, okay. So by default, primary entities are 100% owned. And if we want to make any shared entities, so shared owned entities are like, uh, it should not exceed more than 100%, okay. So, yeah. So for ancestry ownership, ancestry ownership, any override to console method must be applied to all ancestors, ancestors. okay. Suppose I have a, uh, a level zero entity, okay, and the consolidation for method for the particular entity is let's say uh, for for whatever reason let's say we have more than 50 percent of ownership but the entity is the equity method so as well as we have the equity method for the base level entity we must have to make parent level entity as the equity uh equity method for that also we have to define the equity method for that particular parent also okay so otherwise uh, the system will uh, like system will assume that it is a subsidiary okay it will not follow uh it will not assume it as a, it has equity equity company okay and uh, level zero entities so as i told you that uh, can be holding companies and are these companies are uh, like considered as legal entities okay and then we have opening balance ownership chain so suppose like uh, we have that every closing balance goes to the next year opening balance okay but if there is in case we have some sudden reduction or any deduction in the ownership okay so uh, at the disposals at the moment of the disposals the changes will go and but if we are acquiring any sort of like we are increasing our ownership okay so in in that case our acquisitions will get increased so this is what like uh, ownership data problems we have okay and if i go to the instance the fccs application uh, at the navigator, you will go to consolidation in the application, and here we will you will see the ownership structure. Okay, so suppose you see that we have a C level or the parent entity. Okay, and under this we have a children. So for the you can make one of these uh, members or the level zero entities as the one of them can only be the holding company, holding uh, it can be the holding entity and other other entities will cannot be holding company they, they might be can become subsidy or if if i select as uh, control if i select the control is no then you can able to select the consolidation method as equity proportional non-consolidated discontinuous discontinuous and inactive so this is a type of uh, ownership management you can do with the help of fccs um, in this tab okay and uh, you can see we have scenario we have year period so for every scenario period uh and entity we have to define the ownership structure as well as the uh, whatever the control we have okay and if you want to see the this is the tree view of uh, the parent legal entity view if you want to see legal entity view okay so in this manner you can just click on it and you, you will see that uh, we have this sort of structure here okay and basically it helps when you make the the chain holding case or any step step level of entity case okay and uh, if you go to actions you can manage the ownerships also 
the methods you are, we have in the FCTS. You can see that we have a range of ownership and you can define that if the subsidy is less, uh, more than 50%, then the control is yes. And, and you can also like uh, add any sort of, according to your, your need, you can add any new range and any new method also, okay? So let me just cancel it and we will move, move uh, forward to our next topic. Okay, so then we have, uh, next we have the exchange rate. So basically exchange rate do not guarantee that data will be translated because uh, like if you is using data management, okay, or data integration, uh, native uh, load, no other action is required. Like we have to compute rates, okay, when we have, like we are entering the forms, valid the forms, we are entering the rates and rates or anything, okay. So, uh, or in the other grades or in the smart view, we have to compute rates for the, for the, we have to run the specific rule. Okay, either we can go to the rules and we can run the rule, uh, the computer rates, uh, or we have the, or we can, straight away we can just run the business rule for the rates. Okay, then uh, we have to make sure that the POV is correct. So these are the basic tips and tricks we are just, we are just discussing here. And you will get prompted to with the last POV you have used, enter rates for currency to application currency. And you know that uh, for USD, you should always, if the reporting currency is USD, Okay, then you have to write uh, one one, and for other currencies, you like we have euro. So we are uh, in the screenshot. We have it is a, uh, the average rate, rate is two. Then we have ending exchange rate input for the euro that is four. But likewise for the euro, we have uh, at the intersection of euro from two currency from currency and two currency, we have used double one in the average and ending. So you have to be very clear that uh, what is the currency we are addressing and for what year we are using. So the POV must be correct. Okay, so now we have the override data. So your override data must be at exact same intersection as the data being being overridden for all dimension except the consolidation dimension. So if you can see in the screen that uh, we are sort of already entered currency dates, oh sorry, entered currency data. So we have common stock, uh, we have already have 20,000 in the common stock. Okay, and suppose if we want to override in that, so at the same intersection and for the particular, uh, like you can see that for the particular currency that is USD, we are entering the amount. So we have to be like more precise, precisely choose our POV that it should be the override, override amount should be like accurately uh, got uh, inputted in the field, in the smart view or the inter intersection. So for the uh, for the particular overridden data or override data, we have to correctly choose the intersection. Okay, so now lastly we have uh, metadata entity. Okay, and uh, as you know that in the entities uh, dimension we have uh, we can have alternate hierarchies as well. Okay, and uh, it is uh, like uh, recommended that we do not share parent entities like. Uh, we can only share the leaf member or the the zero level uh, children or the members. Okay, and sharing parent entity will result in elimination uh, will not occur correctly. Like um, when you share the parent entity, okay, within any sort of hierarchy. So the elimination will not work properly. This is that what is suggested. Okay, so now we have made an account. And metadata account, uh, we have this topic, and in FCCS, it provides a series of pre pre uh, series of uh, standard accounts. We have, you know, that we have balance sheet pre seeded in the FCCS when we have traditional balance sheet approach and other balance sheets as well. So uh, when you have to like uh, that when the data is entered correctly. So how we are assuming that what uh, what asset figure are get, getting the correct figures or not and the liability figures are uh, getting the cut figures or not. Even the PNL items are getting the cut figures or not. So for suppose I type uh, revenue. So revenue must be always in a positive figure. It uh, Okay, and for the expenses, it should take it as negative to roll up the correct uh, gross profit or whatever you say, okay, net income. So likewise, I have told you that, uh, uh, like I told you that, uh, for correct positive figures and the and the correct negative numbers for the uh, like credit entries and all the things, so we have to define the correct account settings and account type uh, in the FCC application for the particular particular account. So how we can do that? So I will not gonna read this all. Uh, we are just going to see the cases over here, and 
we will see it practically that how we can set up the account types and all the settings. So in dimension, we have to go to dimensions. And let's say I have to like add a member. Let's say I want to add a member. And uh, I'm going to add a child to cache and cache equivalence. So first you have to define the name. Let's say you can give any name according to your corresponding needs and all the things. So let's say in my case, it is 11212 and uh, alias we can give, let's say cash, cash account. Okay. And in account type, you, you know that for every asset account, we have to select the account type of, as asset. If we choose it as a liability or anything else, it will be wrong. Okay. So let's take it as assets. And for variance reporting, either it can be expense or non-expense. The cash accounts are basically non-expense accounts. So we are choosing that. And uh, for the time balance, we have flow. Okay. We can have other time balance as well. But uh, for our, uh, like, for our topic, suppose I want a positive figure. So I will select asset plus the variance reporting as non-expense. So I will get a positive figure in the, in the cash account. But if I if I'm choosing the PNL account, okay, let's say we have like telephone expense. Okay, so for a for a negative number for that, we have to like take it as expense and variance reporting should also also be also be taken as expense. Then only in the for whatever hierarchy we have, then only the amount will be taken as a negative number. Okay, and suppose we are uh, registering revenue. Okay, ignore the pain in there. I'm just uh, showing for the purpose of understanding the, the particular meaning of the account type. Okay, so let's say we have rev sales. Okay, and sales for any particular product. Let's say sales for mobiles. Okay, so uh, we will select the account type as revenue. Okay, and uh, here it is again the non expense sort of variance reporting. So now, and you can see the plan type, console type is addition. So this is how you can maintain the metadata and you will get a positive or negative number according to your need. And for a better understanding, you can read out this whole text here. Okay, and uh, if I give you an example that data could be sourced as private, uh, as positive numbers for asset and revenue and as negative numbers for liability, equity and expenses. So as I told you that uh, we got this sort of uh, positive and negative numbers with the help of this, okay? And then we have a seed members calculation or like a system calculation that how we are getting the balance sheet and all the members of the hierarchy in the account hierarchy, okay? So in the account dimension, you, you know that we have total asset, we have balance sheet, we have equity, we have under the balance sheet, we have various sort of uh, members, okay? So if the balance sheet is like, if it like if the balance if balance calculus calculus enabled then we have this balance fccs balance okay and you know that we have these um, members as well and the if the cda is like if we enable the cd multi currency then we have a cda account okay and uh, yeah you can see that then we have other reserves and if multi currency is enabled and cicd is selected okay it must be it must be cicd Okay, so yeah. So let's move on to next uh, next slide, and uh, then we have system calculation, and it is recommended that we do not move the following accounts. These are the following accounts you have in the screen that uh, accounts should like. We do not move these account outside of our outside of our primary balance sheet. So you can have a look with that, and uh, that, like we have FX CICD account. If the CICD is selected, then we have this account. And these these are the list of accounts we have. Okay, these list of members, we better say that uh, they should not be moved out of the primary balance sheet hierarchy. Okay, so with the help of this, you can have a smooth uh, working with your FCC application and your figures will get, like as you expect the figures, it should come. Okay, so then we have made it at a hierarchy. So uh, you know that we we have various parent-child relationship, okay. And uh, under every return hunting, we have 
return earning prior then we have current okay then we have owner's income okay and then we have net income then we have all the all the hierarchies here okay and if we enable the multi currency and CICD is enabled then we have this that FCC has underscore OR OB FX CD, CDA and if this multi currency is enabled same thing and uh, the second account we have, the second member we have is FCC as underscore total other comprehensive income if multi currency and CICTS are enabled. So, this is sort of hierarchy we have in the metadata of account, account dimension. So, lastly, we have other account items. So, it is basically recommended that in the account dimension, we do not put any level zero dynamic cal member within the primary balance sheet with a member of member formula. Okay. So it so it won't uh, it, sh it might disturb the calculations on all the thing, and we do not flag an account as both as a flag account as well as a plug account to it. Okay, we do not flag like both account as a plug account. Okay, and assign a plug account to it. So I guess uh, we are done with this uh, video, and uh, this is the part uh, one I guess for this tips and tricks and if you want to see more of it like more videos like this please subscribe to bsp solutions and uh, thank you for watching